Anything for all girls in grades K through one who are interested in doing Girl Scouts. We will be We will be now listening to the morning hymn number five forty seven at the May we all stay.
Sayer said, sign the site to Benjamin Franks. Good morning. My name is Jonathan, and I'm the Vice President for the Youth Ministry.
best the uh, family and team yes. Sister Audrey and family as we have Scott to get them comfort and strength. Please take note of all the other activities to give. I may have your subscription for the uh, picnic. We're asking you to do so because uh, after 300 subscriptions are taken, uh, we will have a full house. Remember, we will be having service here at the same time we're having service at Cascade. So we do what you know. It's not just a picnic. We're going to have the Word of God first. We're going to have worship first and then the picnic. So we ask you to be a part of that. Please continue to pray for everyone who is sick and shut in this. And what a body of God we say. Go back to the door. Let them come in now. Amen. We want to encourage all of God's children as we're entering in. We want to encourage these who are all up here having to face you and look out and try to smile. I want you to smile back at them. And they just feel comfortable. Amen. I want our young people to not only look good, but feel good and feel the love. Amen. Let us continue in this worship experience. Turn it back over to our worship leader.
Step out so we can make a circle on the right side, on the left side. A large circle up in the balcony. And those of you who can step out, you just make it touch where you are. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Yeah. We thank you for all you've done and all you continue to do in our lives. Lord, we ask that you just continue to bless us, guide us, and strengthen us. Bless us with your safety, strength, and mercy, Lord. We ask that you bless everyone that is within the sound of my voice, within our shot. We just thank you for everything that you've given us thus far, and everything that you plan to do for us. Lord, we ask that you place a hedge of protection over the youth and the young adults that are here, the youth and the young adults in this city, this state, this country, and the entire world. Lord. We know that there's a lot of weeping going on, there's a lot of suffering going on. We know that you stand in this ready to bring us into the, into the new dawn. So Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We ask that you just touch the families in this house, Lord. We ask that you touch the bereaved, the sick, and the shut-in, Lord. We ask that you remind them that there's a healing with their name on it. We, we ask that you bless the finances the way they need to be blessed. We ask that you bless the families, the friends, the marriages, the children, everyone, Lord. We just ask that you and allow us to agree that you are the Alpha and the Omega, and that without you there is no us. So we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
family from the pulpit. And to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you. 
Pastor Prince allowing me the opportunity to bring the word today. Been many of you things in the house I spent here at Zion. My home church born and raised causing all types of problems. <laughs> Never thought it would be a day where I'm just standing up here on youth and young adult day preaching a word. That's how mighty God is. Yeah. So I'm not going to waste any of our time. There is a word from the Lord that I've been struggling with this week to try to put it together, to try to put it in such a way that you guys can understand it and walk away with something. And the word comes out of Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. For we have come to this place, to gather in his name, to worship him. We have come to this place, to gather in his name, to worship him. We Take me out of me and 
and preach your spirit in me. Stand in front of me so people can see you and not me. Let this word be a blessing to somebody so that they may grow closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you could just help me turn to your neighbor for a minute and just say, from a dead end, a dead end. to destiny. The city, the city is ours. Yeah. I don't think y'all heard me. Young people, if you could turn to somebody else and say, from dead end yeah. to destiny. Yeah. And the sub of it is, the city, the city is ours. Yeah. We are in a time of our lives and in this world where we are in need of strong and courageous leaders more than ever before. If you look at the direction of our country and where our country is going, you would know that we need leaders that are strong and courageous more than ever before. Even if you look at our city, you look at the city of Baltimore and see all that is going on, you will know that we need leaders who are strong and courageous. Decades later, we're still talking about vacant houses in Baltimore. Decades later, we're still talking about how to make our schools better. Yeah. Decades later, Pastor Prince, we're still talking about how to make our communities safer. Yeah. Decades later, we're still talking about the needs to create jobs so that brothers can feed their families. Decades later, we're still talking about affordable health care and drug treatment programs. It seems as though like the issue like here in our text, we have hit a dead end in the road. If I can take it a step further, someone in here has been at a dead end in their lives. Your personal life has hit a dead end. You are struggling financially. You're struggling in your relationships. You're struggling on your job. You're struggling with health issues. And so you feel as though you have hit a dead end in your life. Is there anybody who feel like they may be at a crossroad where you just say, I don't know what else I can do. My children just give me all types of problems. And now I find myself at a dead end. The children of Israel, my brothers and sisters in our text, has been led uh, by the leader of Moses out of captivity, and now they have been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. They have been going around in circles trying to figure out how they can make it to the other side, how they can make it from a dead end to destiny. They have been wandering around for 40 years, and many of us have been dealing with issues over and over again for many years, and we're still trying to figure out, how do I get from where I am now to where God wants me to be? And you're saying, how do I get from having just enough to being able to have more than enough? How can I get from satisfactory relationships to having relationships that's filled with Christ at the center? How can I get from having just a little bit to being overfilled with the promises of God? Well, my brothers and sisters, God wants us to know that it takes a strong and courageous believer to make it to the promised land. Turn to your neighbor and say, God wants you to know that it takes a strong and courageous believer to make it to the promised land. Some of you said, I need to get to the promised land. I had just enough of enough. I need to get to a place where God is blessing me, that place where God has already set aside for me. How do I get from my current situation to where God wants me to be? And I stop by to let somebody know that in order to get from a dead end, in order to get from where you are now to where God wants you to be, you have to be strong and courageous. But the question some of you may be asking is, how do I be strong and courageous for my journey from where I am now to where God wants straight to the point. I don't want to be all day. The first thing you have to do is talk to your neighbor and say, receive God's challenge. We have to receive the challenge of God. God has caused so many of us of young folks and young adults uh, to be able to lead a generation uh, of our peers. Uh, and what we understand here is that Joshua, uh, who was the mentee of Moses, uh, is now at a place where God is calling him to lead this current generation into the promised land. Brother Moses has done the best that he can, but God called Moses to lead them out, but he did not call Moses to take them in to where they need to be. Some of us, uh, some of our leaders have brought us to a place where we are now, but it is up 
up to us and now take us over across the line into our destiny. But in order for us to get to the destiny, God is saying, I need some young folks. I need some people who are willing and able to accept the challenge that I have given you. If you are going to make it to the other side, you cannot be afraid to step out on God and allow him to turn you over and to your destiny. God is saying, I need some people who are able and willing to accept the challenge. And so my assignment today is to call out some folks in here who is willing to say yes to God's call. Yes to God's will. Yes to God's assignment. Whenever you say it, God, I say yes because half of the battle of getting to the other side is simply yes. And so God is saying in order, in order for me to help you get to the other side, you have to first accept the challenge. But here, Pastor Prince, is where I'm getting ready to get in trouble a little bit. I feel like I'm home, so I can kind of talk to you guys a little bit. Uh, now, if you can put my... Now, not only do you have to accept the challenge, but, but my sub point to this first point is that, is that in order for the second challenge, we also must accept God's chosen leader. Oh, let me see that again. I think, I think, I think they missed that. Yeah. In, order for, in order for us to get to the promised land, some of us uh, have to be able to accept God's chosen leader. Yes. Now, we have some seasoned folks in here, not just in here, it's not just happening here, but all over, who, who is refusing to accept uh, that we have a generation of young people with new ideas and fresh ideas and new way of doing things. And the reason that we're stuck in the wilderness for 40 years is because you're still thinking that you know what's best for everybody. Verse 16. It says, 
They answered Joshua. These are the people. Whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. It says, just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Now here's what blows my mind, Pastor Curtis. It says, only, uh, it says, it says, it says, if anybody rebels against your word and does not obey whatever you command us, it's talking to Joshua. They said we will put them to death. Mm. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey, whatever you command them, we will put to death. See, that's the type of, 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 of followers that we need uh, for our pastors, for our young folks. We need some people that say, you know what, I tried all I can do, so now I have done what I can do. So now I'm going to sit down with whatever you young people decide you want to do. I'm going to stand behind you and follow you and do whatever.
that he is now. Yeah. And so we have to, turn to the said, we have to yeah. reflect on it. Because I have not always been who I am now.
Joshua, if I'm Joshua, I'm going to reflect on the time where we, where Moses and I and all of us was down in the valley, getting ready to fight against the Israelites, and they was coming up against them, and God told Moses to hold up the staff. He told them to hold up the staff because. As long as your hands is up and the staff is up, they can't turn you down. But the more you take your, take your hand down, they will come up against you. So if I'm, if I'm Joshua, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking that, that there's somebody in here who got some people coming up against you. And I want to tell you, all you got to do is throw your hands up. Some of you in here say, I gave my life to Christ. I was so excited. 
when I first gave my life to Christ, I was involved in ministry. I was excited to come to church. I was excited to serve on the ministry. But yet, it seemed like I hit a dead end in my life. And I don't know where else to go. God is saying, I'm calling courageous and strong people. He said, you don't have to be afraid, number one. Why? Because he said, I will be with you. Just as I was with Moses. I will be with you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. If you're one of those persons who's struggling out of fear to step out on something that God has already promised you, step down the aisle. Give God your hand. Give, give one of the deacons your hand and give God your heart. Let us pray with you. Is anybody in here?